Don't screw up my favorite case in ZXT. I practically begged them when I heard that they were redesigning the H7 Flow. Did they listen or will I have to make like Ariana Grande and say, thank you, next? Well, we're about to find out right here, right now on Robitech. I've made it no secret how much I love NZXT's H7 series of cases and the 2022 H7 Elite in white, so crisp, so clean. It was among one of my favorites and believe me when I said it was dang pretty y'all. It was almost the perfect case. And when I say almost perfect, I mean that we gave it the award for and I quote, we almost got everything right, but then we got hammered one night and made one bad choice and almost ruined the entire build experience. Yes. Those were my exact words immortalized on the internet and in a fake award somewhere. So when NZXT announced that they were redesigning the H7 again, I was like, please NZXT, my heart can't take it. Fix the cable management stuff and leave the rest alone. Did they hear my anguish cries in the night? Well, that's what this case review is all about. Starting off with pricing. The newly redesigned NZXT H7 Flow is available in two flavors, not vanilla and chocolate, the H7 Flow and the H7 Flow RGB. Both versions of the case are available in black or white with the H7 Flow ringing in at $129.99 and the H7 Flow RGB at $149.99. Like the previous versions of the H7, the white cases have an ultra clear tempered glass side panel with the black cases having a dark tinted tempered glass. You know, honestly, I feel like, I don't know why the dark tempered glass, I actually really feel like they should both not have dark temp tinted tempered glass. Let us know down in the comments below what your thoughts are. Now you may notice with the updated H7 that we don't have an elite version with a tempered glass front panel. It's just perforated H7 Flow and H7 Flow RGB. While we love the aesthetic of the tempered glass front panel, and honestly, they designed very well around it in the previous version, there are some trade-offs, obviously, when it comes to thermals. I guess that's just the cost of beauty. We also noticed in NZXT's previous generation of Elite cases that Elite essentially meant that the cases came with RGB fans. And in the case of the H5 Elite, only an RGB controller, not the RGB and fan controllers found in the H7 Elite and the glorious H9 Elite. To be honest, we are big fans of the name change, which brings us to talking about the H7's included fans. The H7 Flow comes with three 120 millimeter NZXT F120Q fans, while the H7 Flow RGB comes with NZXT new F360 RGB core with the 320 millimeter fans in a single frame. This is NZXT's answer to the unified fan craze, which we're here for since it means less cables to manage. Now, the F360 RGB core fans in the H7 Flow RGB are slightly different than the retail versions we were just talking about. The retail versions of these fans have two options for connecting. You have a single cable for NZXT's updated controller or an adapter that converts the cable into a fan header and a three pin five volt RGB header. And NZXT's previous RGB header that they have used along with other folks. Now the case version forgoes the option to use NZXT's updated controller and just gives you a fan cable and an RGB cable. For a $20 upcharge from the H7 Flow to the H7 Flow RGB, you, the buyer, have to decide what's right for you. To put it into context for what you get for $20, you essentially get RGB and four less cables to manage. That seems worth it to me, but again, value is in the eye of the beholder. One small note, these case fans in both the H7 Flow and the H7 Flow RGB are not quite as versatile or performant as their retail cousins. We figured that this was just something you should be aware of if you're interested in getting this case. Now, if you haven't seen the F360 Core RGB fans before, check out the short we did where we break down all the details you need to know about these fans, including their five year warranty. You can also check out our live stream from Computex where we showed off the fans along with the new power supplies from NZXT, which we'll be sharing more on very soon. And we even got to meet the founder of NZXT as well and walk through like the whole history. It was really cool. Now, if you missed that, go ahead and slap that subscribe button, whip that like button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss videos like that or live streams on location, PC builds, reviews, giveaways, and much more here, both for Robitech. And by the way, head down to the description and hit the follow for Robitech Live as well. Okay, we got a bit lost talking about fans. Let's talk about the H7 Flow's dimensions. The H7 Flow measures in at 18.43 inches or 468 millimeters deep, 9.6 inches or 244 millimeters wide, and 21.42 inches 
or 544 millimeters tall. For comparison, that's about 2.5% less depth than the previous H7, but 20% wider and 7.7% taller than the previous H7. It is a taller boy. This is really hopeful news considering our comments about the last H7's issues, specifically when we talked about cable management space. As for weight, the new H7 weighs in at 25.5 pounds or 11.13 kilograms. Comparing against the 2022 H7 flow, that's about 11% heavier, but with the increased size, it's not terribly surprising to see it put on a couple of pounds. Guys, look, I'm not calling the new H7 fat, it's just got bonus content. We're not fat shaming PC cases around here, okay? Now let's move inside the case because this is where things really get interesting. I notice you're probably noticing some differences. Now moving inside the case is super easy thanks to NZXT's toolless design. Just a few pops and you're inside. Seriously, the only way they could have made this any easier is if they made the case anticipate my whims. And I'm not really sure if the world is ready for that. As for motherboard support, the NZXT H7 Flow has support for mini ITX, micro ATX, and ATX motherboards, which is unsurprising. But what did surprise us is that it supports EATX motherboards up to 277 millimeters wide. We have to pause here because up until this point, there hasn't been an NZXT case that has supported EATX motherboards without modifying, that is. With the growing number of bigger motherboards, this is really good to see. And what NZXT does to make this really simple and maintain their iconic look is that they put a second set of screw holes on the vertical cable shroud so that you can move it toward the front ever so slightly. Does it perfectly maintain those clean lines we like to see in NZXT? Not quite. There is a small gap between the shroud and the back plane, but it's a compromise that we're glad to see all the same. Unfortunately, the new H7 Flow doesn't have support for back connect motherboards at this point, but given how this case is designed, honestly, we wouldn't be surprised or we would really welcome seeing a BTF Project Zero version in the future. I mean, given just it's the extra tooling and cutting the holes, I'm really surprised they didn't come out of the gate with it. I, I'm sorry, it's just not a fad that's going away. Better yet though, NZXT, we would love to see a back connect version of the NZXT N7 motherboards, come on. That would be awesome, and imagine how clean that build would look. Moving on to GPU support though, the H7 Flow supports GPUs up to 410 millimeters in length. Now moving on to fans and cooling, the redesigned H7 Flow can support three 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter fans at the case front, three 120 millimeter or two 140 millimeter fans at the case top, three 120 millimeter at the case bottom, and either 120 millimeter or 140 millimeters in the rear of the case. As for AIO and radiator support, the redesigned H7 Flow has some support for AIO and radiators up to 360 millimeters or 280 millimeters at the top, or you can do up to 420 millimeters in the case front. That is a lot of room for cooling, but would the case benefit from a 420 millimeter AIO? Well, you should check out our 360 millimeter versus 420 millimeter Olympics thing that we just finished and answer that question more directly. Now, if you wanna use an air cooler inside of the H7 Flow, there is up to 185 millimeters worth of clearance for the air cooler. So if you wanna use air coolers like Corsair's A115 or the Cooler Master MA824, there is room to spare. With the front air intake of this case, an air cooler would be eaten good in the neighborhood. Now. Let's talk about storage space. The H7 Flow has a mounting plate that sits directly behind the motherboard's tray that can fit two three and a half inch drives, as well as the most adorable drive tray up in the front for two two and a half inch SSDs. I mean, look at this thing. How could you not want to just pinch its cheeks? As for power supply support, the H7 Flow can support PSUs with a length of 200 millimeters. What is also worth pointing out about this space is that NZXT flipped the orientation of the PSU to give the H7 Flow a bit more of a dual chamber case feel. And since we're back here talking about the space, let's talk about what NZXT has done with critiques like ours on room for cable management. To us, it looks like NZXT has left their benders in the past because we have two more cable management channels with Velcro ties and a back compartment that size increases from 22 millimeters to 34.5 millimeters. That's a nearly 60% increase in the amount of space for cable management. Now we love to see it. And in a back connect situation where you need extra room for those internal cables, the H7 Flow would be amazing. Again, come on NZXT, we're literally handing you the next win here. Rounding out the tour of the back with another thing we love to see, NZXT has once again delivered a unified front panel connector. Woohoo! But they've also taken it a step further. They have a USB 3, USB C, and HD audio cable that all match the color of the case. It's like they, they, they're trying to win back my love. The only thing I could pick apart here, and you know what, not everybody's perfect, is that the HD audio cable still shows color cables 
reminiscent of a hot dog stand. We have seen someone release a case with the HD audio wires that match the case colors, so we know it's absolutely possible. It's a small thing, but we're gonna allow it for now. It's, it's okay, my pretty. Okay, so we're getting a little too carried away because you still need to know how the H7 actually performs. We're gonna slap some details here about our test bench on the screen here as a quick reminder that all of our PC case tests are done using the same components every time in the same testing environment and with the same tests. And those tests are run at Intel CPU stock settings, so no shenanigans here. And then we leave the stock case fans in the orientation that the case shipped with, then we fill in the rest of them with the NZXT's F120Q fans. The one exception here is that when we test with an AIO, we'll use its stock fans, and as a PC case allows, we'll also mount them on the top of the system. We saw up to an air cooler, we don't add fans to the top. So since we're looking at the standard H7 flow, that means we have three of NZXT's F120Q case version fans in the front and three retail F120Q fans in the case bottom and one retail F120Q in the case rear. So onto the numbers. While idling, the newly designed H7 Flow held average CPU temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius and the GPU temperature at 28 degrees Celsius. For comparison, that put the H7 Flow in line with cases like Antec C5 and the Fractal North XL Mesh. That is great company for the H7 to keep. Under full CPU load though, the H7 Flow averaged 71 degrees Celsius on the CPU and 27 degrees on the GPU. This sandwiched the H7 performance wise between the Fractal North XL Mesh and North XL tempered glass cases. The H7's GPU temps were far closer to the Asus Tough GT302, which is amazing to see. As for our 1440p gaming benchmarks, the H7 Flow continued its streak of wise choices by staying at the lower end of the thermal charts, with a CPU average of 41 degrees Celsius and the GPU temps at 58. The new H7 Flow bested the H6 Flow, but couldn't quite topple the GT302, which is our current reigning king of cases. Now, because this is an airflow case, we also wanted to share the results of the new H7 Flow using Noctua's NU12A air cooler. Starting at idle, the H7 Flow held an average CPU temperature of 20 six degrees Celsius, while the GPU hovered at a comfortable average of around 28 degrees. While this positioned the H7 flow between the NZXT H6 flow and the Fractal North XL tempered glass version, the H7 flow was a degree warmer for the CPU than the Asus GT302, but a degree cooler on the GPU. Not bad for resting temperatures. Under CPU load, the H7 flow held its ground against last year's king of cold, the H6 flow, while going toe to toe once again with the GT302. While both the new H7 flow and the GT302 held CPU averages at 77 degrees Celsius and GPU temperatures of 28 degrees, the H7 flow was on the warmer side of 77 degrees. And in our 1440p gaming benchmarks, the H7 flow was relentlessly in its pursuit of perfection with CPU averages at 45 degrees and GPU GPU temps at 59. We saw a similar story to our idle temps. The H7 was one degree warmer on the CPU and one degree cooler on the GPU than the GT302. While it didn't quite topple our reigning case of 2024, the H7 Flow is now the coolest NZXT case we have seen to date. We've already given you a bit of commentary and considerations along the way, but now it's time to really narrow them down. Here are a few things that we think you need to know in case you're looking at the NZXT H7 Flow as your next PC case. Thing number one, let's talk about fan mounting. Overall, the options that the H7 Flow has for fan mounts are great. In this case, there is enough room for a generous amount of cooling. And we love that there is an option to use 140 millimeter fans in the front. This is great for airflow overall, but even better if you plan to use an air cooler in the H7. As a related aside, we also love that the front fan bracket is actually removable. But there are a few things with fan mounting that are kind of weird. The railing up at the top of the case has this middle rail that sits somewhere in between 120 millimeters and 140 millimeters, so maybe 130 millimeters? Since there are no additional rails on either side of the fan mounts, it's a choice, but it doesn't really offer much choice to builders. Unless NZXT is secretly testing 130 millimeter PC case fans, we saw something similar on Antec C5 II, and since we called it out there, we're gonna call it out here too. Moving on to the bottom fan mounts, these mounts have handy rubber grommets to reduce fan vibrations, which is a huge plus. Plus, but that means you're gonna need to use slightly longer screws to get them to mount. NZXT does include these screws with the H7's hardware kit, but if you're used to using the stock screws that come with your fans, you might need to dip into their supply. That being said, since Corsair's new IQ Link RX 120 fans come with non-standard screws, we tested out those to see if the grommet's extra bump would cause a problem, 
guess what? It doesn't. And those fan, those screws, man, so good. And just, again, be aware that you're likely going to end up using the included hardware with your fans. Now, speaking of included hardware, that takes us to thing number two. Let's talk about the case fans. Listen, we think it's great that NZXT included fans with the H7 Flow and the H7 Flow RGB, but it is worth mentioning that these, despite their names, are not the same as the retail counterparts. We mentioned this early in the review, but it's worth bringing up here again for this reason. We think that the H7 Flow can be a far better airflow case than what it is out of the box. These case fans have a very narrow window of speed, and that speed was decent enough to perform the way it did in our test. But just be aware that you're not going to have a whole lot of control over these fans. Is this a deal breaker? Not by any stretch of the imagination, but it is worth considering if you're looking at making the most of your H7 Flow. The H7 Flow RGB, that's a little bit different, but still always worth mentioning that look at your fan performance and decide if it's gonna be okay for you. Okay, now thing number three, let's talk about grommets. Now we're not referring to the fan grommets here. I know we've already talked about those. We're saying that this spot down here at the bottom could really benefit from some rubber grommets. Considering that the PSU is literally sitting underneath this spot, there is a cavernous hole here that gives an unobstructed view to all sorts of cable messes. Listen, we love that the motherboard is recessed here. It creates such a great cool look in this case, but dang it, NZXT give us some rubber grommets here to clothe our cabling chain. There is literally no other way to hide cables. It's, it's just right there, all hanging out in the breeze. So we've looked at benchmarks. We've examined the ins and outs. Now it's time to answer the big question, what do we think about the H7 Flow? And more importantly, did they ruin one of my favorite cases or did they learn from the mistakes of their past? Overall, we actually really like the redesign of the H7 Flow, but we have to point something out with it. NZXT used to have a very distinct design language that seemed to be evolving. The H500, the H700 cases were so iconic that you could spot them from a mile away. The H5 and the H7 models carried some of that inspiration forward, but then you start to see cases like the H6 and the H9 that they have taken a massive step away from that iconic design language. If you go back and watch our live stream from Computex, you can see the shift of ever so slight changes. In a lot of ways, the H7 Flow kind of reminds us of an upside down Fantex NV7. You can look right there, you see the, see the forehead? For better or for worse, that case also had a recessed motherboard tray and a very open feel to it. And it had its own quirks, but one of the things I gotta point out, man, a screen would look really good down there. Whether you like it or not, that is completely up to you. But what we will say is that with NZXT's case evolution, we've seen an increase in overall performance that has been absolutely amazing. At the end of the day, the H7 Flow is a solidly built case with great airflow and expanded room for cable management. This new design took the H7's mid-tower heritage and married it with a more modern dual chamber vibe. It seems like NZXT really took what they learned from the H6 flow and applied it to the H7 series. What we also loved was that NZXT looked across their lineup of cases and recognized that they were missing support for EATX motherboards. While the accommodation isn't perfect and you lose a little bit of that front air intake with the gap it creates in the cable shroud, it definitely beats having to modify an NZXT case to make them fit, which someone on our team has actually done a few times. Hey man. Speaking of modifications though, and I, I kind of hinted at this earlier, what we'd love to see, especially if NZXT does like an elite version of the H7, is a digital screen down there, like the Deepcool Morpheus or like Heights 170 Touch. Pairing one of those with a super clean NZXT N7 Back Connect motherboard would just send this case over the top. Love to know your thoughts down in the comments if you agree. So did NZXT ruin one of my favorite cases? No, they kind of did the opposite. They made it better. Do we wish that the new H7 Flow had back connect support for BTF and Project Zero? Yes. Do we still wish NGXT offered a little bit more variety in the color than they did in the past? Yes. Do they lose that award for bad decision making? I think they have more than made up for the mistakes of their youth. So in the words of Ariana Grande, if she was dedicating an album to PC building, thank you NZXT. So that is our review of the updated H7 Flow from NZXT. We wanna give a huge shout out to NZXT for not only letting us take a look at it, but also letting us be the first to build in it at Computex. That's right, I was the first to build it publicly. But before you leave, we wanna know what you think about it. Do you like the redesign? If you've built inside of an H700 or H7 series case, let us know down in the comments which changes are the most meaningful to you. And while you're down there, go ahead and slap that subscribe button. 
whip that like button and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss notifications each and every time we post a video like this right here at Robitech. And if you are curious about what kind of builds might work inside of this or just want to continue the conversation about this case, head over to our Discord server, discord.gg slash Robitech. Amazing place to talk to other like-minded PC and tech enthusiasts who love to chat about these very things. And you know what? You might just make a friend. Also, make sure you follow us at Robitech absolutely everywhere. We thank you so much for watching this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.